What I'm planning on doing is taking the uh, Future Slums Highway in Aftermath and see if we can come up with a structure where, where we can divide the elements. Right, everybody. I think we're back. I think we're live. If y'all can hear us in the chat, give us a thumbs up. Um, thank you all. Hey, Dan, Rob. Hey, Hollows Woodsman. We could not be more excited to be here with y'all. Um, thank you guys for, for being in the chat, for being so lively. Um, it was awesome having uh, Nick and Pat on. Don't worry if you missed some of that. Um, we will be posting uh, that video later um, and we're going to have uh, we'll do more stuff with them. But now we are incredibly excited to have our really good buddy, Dinar Wardia. Oh, there he is. What up, Dinar? What's up, guys? What's up? How you actually you said my name really proper, man. No problem. You know, I've been practicing. I've been practicing. You gave, you gave me the old this this one last time we did this. Exactly. Uh, that was uh, that was at Playgrounds over in the Netherlands uh, last time we saw you, man. What what time is it over there where you are? It's here actually 7 p.m. Three, nice. Yeah, 7 p.m. Yeah. So th this is Friday night. This is a Friday yeah. night. This Friday is a Friday night, night set. It's the best. It's the best set, man. Doing this on a Friday night. I love it. I love it. Art, Art Tosi says it's 8 p.m. there. Anyone else in the chat, um, tell us where you are. Tell us what time zone it is. Um, this is a pretty global event. Um, and, you know, we've got live streams going from here, from all of our homes. We're in, in Dinar's home. We're here in Max's house. Um, this is the work from home edition. Uh, so uh, tell, us, tell us what's going on. Uh, Dinar, what, uh, what are you going to be showing us today? Give us a little breakdown before we uh, jump in. What I'm planning on doing is taking the uh, Future Slums Highway in Aftermath and see if we can like come up with a structure where we can have like um, where we can divide the elements and with elements I mean like all right you have uh, what, what we are going to do about by the way is like a sandy place kind of like with dunes and broken buildings and stuff so what I was planning on doing is kind of showing the steps by steps which I would uh, take usually to make an image like this basically. I love that. I love that. Yeah. And really, really briefly before we dive in here, Max, can you explain to the audience, because there are probably some people out there who don't know what Kipash 3D is. Sure. Yeah. So um, Kipash 3D, basically we create 3D assets and, and we think of them like the Legos or the building blocks mm -hmm. of digital worlds. Um, so right now, Dinar is going to be using uh, Future Slums, um, Highways and Aftermath. So uh, we create the destroyed buildings or the on-ramps and roads and lights um, of a city and, and those types of elements. Um, hopefully that means that, uh, that Dinar and other artists have a, a toolkit to start working with, save them a bunch of time so they can dive in and focus on how to create a, a compelling world and tell a story with that. So, Dinar, you're going to be you're going to be showing us around here. Um, and Vika, uh, by the way, guys, y'all will hear us refer to Vika and Jacqueline, our producers um, from Playgrounds TV, who are, are working so hard to figure out some of these tech issues. Um, you'll hear us just talking to them. Um, huge shout outs to them. They have they have been tirelessly uh, working to make this thing go down and they've been doing such an amazing job. Um, so, Vicky, if we could, uh, we can probably keep up uh, Dinar's screen and then uh, we'll dive into this demo when uh, when we're ready. Um, and Art Toasty says, bless you, tech team. Clap says, tea <laughs> sipping zombie. I, I couldn't agree more. This is really hard stuff to do. Um, you know, and, and sure. we're in LA, they're in the Netherlands. Um, you guys are all over the world, as you just put in the chat. Um, making, a, making a live stream like this is tough. Um, if we wanted this to, to be super silky and smooth, we just posted a video to YouTube. But the reason we're doing this live is so that we can engage with you all in real time. Um, JD uh, says we can see the screen. Um, thank you very much. And T sipping zombie says came for the interviews. Stayed for Dinar. <laughs> here we go. <laughs> um, awesome man. So uh, so tell me what uh, tell me what we're looking at here, Dinar. Yeah. So this these are the uh, kit batches that I'm going to use. And what we're trying to do, what we're going to do is try to make like a small version of a big landscape that that I would usually make for an image or briefing for like Last of Us. So I took multiple kits from kit bash and I put some sand and like put different elements and broken parts so that we can have our own story and within this we can almost have like from each angle we can show something you know and the cool part about this is is if we put on the light which is like this check this out guys and then we have the fogging look at that uh. look how cool that is and we can even play with the lighting you know we can and even you're working in Blender, right? Yeah, these. This is in Blender, indeed. Yeah. And are you rendering with Eevee or Cycles? Yeah. This one is with Eevee because 
I wanted to show that, first of all, I wanted to interact with the people more and then show them like while I'm working on it. And secondly, you don't really like with most images, you don't really need high tech 3D because back in the day, I didn't even use this much 3D. So it's just, you know, what, what if you need like multiple sketches from one area, you can just, you know, like you can take one from here or you can take one from here and it's a story in itself. So it's just to show like how you can make how you can make a set where you can make multiple uh, uh, images. You know, you're almost like your own director. Sure. And yep. for, for people in the chat who haven't used 3D, Blender is free. So you can grab this software right now for free exactly. and start playing around. Yeah. So we're done with this scene. Let's save this one. Let's show you guys the sets that I, the assets that I have used. So these two are from the slums. I'll just tell you guys, I already, uh, I adjusted a couple of things. First of all, what I just was, um, the textures, I made them a bit more yellow. And by doing that, it kind of looks like it was, uh, you know, it, it, it places itself within a sand element. Because after what, well, like, I, I, me, myself, I come from the Middle East and I've seen buildings go more yellow just because there's a lot of sandstorms and whatnot. So for me, it was just easier to actually, you know, adjust these and kind of make them all align in some u in, in one universe, you know? And that goes for these as well. I think this was a rubble texture, but I just put a sand texture on it so that it's more in line with what I wanted to do. And this is what I love about Kitbash is it's not only like just placing it, it only it also gives you opportunities to actually to actually play with the models, you know, like you can you can even remorph them and you can do whatever you want and they will even stay in, and the textures will stay intact as you can see. Hmm. And that's a very that's a very uh, uh, useful thing for an artist or somebody who wants to be uh, very graphical. And I divided everything between the stuff that we're going to use, you know, all the assets. So let's get started. So, Dinar, we've got a question in the chat. Could you tell uh, Hervis to ask, could you tell us about the computer that you're using, CPU, graphics card? Right. I'm, ac I'm using a, uh, I'm, I'm actually not that good with, with all these, you know, CPU, GPUs. But what I do know is I'm using a GTX 1080 Titan. And I have, I think, 64 gig of RAM. So, I'm kind of like, I am, I am. That's why I, I made I, I choose a couple of buildings just so everybody could actually work with this uh, as well and follow the demo if they wanted to. Cool. I I love that the the first step is you know if you're going to use a bunch of different kits then then trying to bring them together exactly. through materials. Right. And and the, the cool thing about this is is I don't want to worry about that while I'm doing it while I'm placing everything because I already. I already put everything that I'm potentially going to use in, within the image itself. So, without further ado, let's get started, I guess. And here we go. Let's uh, let's rock. This is our first uh, rock this, demo rock of the day. Boat, Dinar, right? What are yeah, we looking exactly. at? Exactly. What are we looking at? So, before I go any further, I just wanted to show what I use from the highway roads. And the cool thing about this is, is you know, it's all separate, actual separate element. If you look at it, you see, it's like it's just one element. But then I put an array on it then all of a sudden you have a full street. So it's it's stuff like this that is very useful for what Kitbash does for me at least, is give me a very solid ground base to work upon. And I think the first uh, thing we're gonna do is hide everything and let's make a, because I want the ground to be broken and there's a, there's a blender tool actually called landscape and what you can do check this out you can play with the depth you know is this you can a, adjust. is this a built-in tool or is it a downloadable uh, it's, plugin it's a built-in tool you just have to you just have to uh, you just have to uh, chip it to uh, to unlock it look awesome. how cool that is yeah you see, the so, plugins in Blender make it so powerful and so fast. It's crazy, it's so, dude. It's amazing to see. Yeah, and you can adjust it. You can do every type of stuff. You can, you know, swirl. You can adjust a lot of stuff. And the cool thing about this is, it looks very rough, obviously. But the more subdivisions you add to it, 
the better it's going to oh, look. Wow. See? I love this too. You've gone, you showed us where we're headed, but you went back to the beginning for people exactly. who, um, you know, so they can see a bit of your process. You know, I yeah. think this is so cool to have access to an artist like you, Dinar. You know, if, if y'all are just joining us in the chat, um, Dinar is, is a concept artist. He's worked on The Last of Us. He's recently been on Horizon. Um, and he's using Blender to show us how we can jump in from the beginning um, and how he builds a, a, some topography to set his scene and then throwing uh, pieces on top to make it uh, to make his scene come to life really quickly. Yeah, it's it's uh, really it's the thing for me about about using 3D is it's not necessarily always about having super high end uh, 3D renders, which. I have to admit, I'm also falling for that trap where I spend too much time in the 3D part. But the important part about this is, is just make use any tool that is necessary to put you to a place where you can you can provide quality. And for me, this is Blender has been amazing so far. Josh, Sean, Jack, are we making Mist? Uh, which would be which would be a good one, Josh. I love that. I love that idea. And, and what up, Josh? Thanks for joining us. Oh yes. Look at this. So, so what are you what are you trying to accomplish? Like, do you are you just playing with it now, or do you have an idea of what I'm you're actually, trying to make here? I'm like playing with it, and I'm thinking about a ground plane which I could use. So, you know, I, I what I always loved in in uh, games like Last of Us is so you have the basic road, and then it's broken, and then you see nature kind of taking over within that. So, that's what I actually want to do right now. I think this is I like this part actually. Mm -hmm. This is very cool. So let's use this. What I do right now is I'm gonna add more detail to it, like this. Look, look how cool that is, right? Uh huh. Totally. And then once we're done, we're just gonna decimate it because, you know, just because somebody asked me what I'm using, I thought let's let's make it as light as possible for everybody. Nice. Um, some right. people in the chat are asking, will this be a VOD or will these be recorded? Um, they are being recorded and they will eventually go out on our YouTube channel, Kitbash 3D. Um, but we don't yet have a release schedule for that. Um, so we hope you can stick around with us today. Um, if you can't eventually, um, but it, you know, they'll probably trickle out over the next year or so. So, um, uh, stick with us today if you can, uh, Okay, and so now you're you're bringing your topography into the the scene that you've already built. Exactly, and now I have to destroy what Kit Bash has provided me. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds so dramatic. So, are you going to actually use that landscape to like carve into the roads, or are you going to yeah. move the roads around it? Sorry, um, I'm I'm so, jumping the gun. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do first Just of all excited. is what I'm going to do is because there's two layers to it, I'm actually going to flatten out and. You'll see in a minute why I'm going to do that. All right. Let's see how it looks. Looks perfect. Let's merge together. Let's unhide everything. And let's do a Boolean on top of it. And what the Boolean does is you're telling it to cut in the places which in I put the second, uh, uh, so I put the broken ground plane. So if I put apply on it, check this out. Oh, oh wow, right, totally. Right, and then what I'm gonna do right now is this is uh, something called Asset Manager and what it does is if you haven't, let's say you have a card that you use multiple times in different scenes, it's it's basically what it says. You're just, you, you save that asset within this Asset manager, and every time, all you have to do is just append, and that's it. Like now, it's that a sand is... texture, but that's not the one that we wanted. We're gonna put a rock texture on top of it. Ah, uh, super cool. Look at that, right? Hmm. What we're gonna do right now is, I think the. Uh, Look at that, right? Uh, oh, wow, dude, I can't believe how fast you did that. Right? I'm, I'm, I mean, you've been going here for four, four minutes. <laughs> so it, this is this is the whole thing, right? I could have gone into a ZBrush, I could have sculpted, I could have done this or that, I could have found a better model, but at the end of the day, 
I, what I'm trying to do is when I make these type of images, I, I just or in 3D, I'm sorry, just try to make a good placement for my uh, for the uh, images or for the uh, photo uh, Photoshop file, so that when I'm in Photoshop, I have a great base to mm -hmm. to work upon. So the second stage, what I want to do right now is we're gonna add some sand, and the way to do that is let's put the text texture on it first. All right, sand texture, that looks good. And what I want to do right now is I'm going to put a displacement tool on it. And there's no map. And this is the cool thing. I'm trying to use as li as less possible as I can, uh, as in textures or assets from internet. Like this is, again, is from uh, from Blender itself. And what we're so you're just adding just a noise texture on there. Exactly, yeah. And when you say as little as possible, you're, you're talking about uh, polygons. Exactly, yeah, polygons and like different uh, 3D models and, and you know, uh, having a lot of external uh, downloading, importing it, it just takes a lot of time. So you just have to think simple for yourself, you know? And for me, for example, all right, you would think, you would say like, okay, but what about the ground floor or whatever? But that's all in stages. The, the first thing I'm looking at right now is like, Okay, how big do I want the plane to be where the buildings could be on top of it as well, you know? Because mm. this is going to be our middle point. So, and based on the cool thing about this is, is you can look at this, you can actually say how big it should or, or how big the, 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 the dunes should be. But for me, I always like it when it's a bit simple, you know? Totally. And then on top of that, we can always make use of other stuff as well, so. And what, uh, what's so cool about what Dinar is doing here is a lot of this stuff you used to have to do by hand. And Dinar yeah. is able to use technology and, and a lot of you know, Blender, the software that he's in is free. Um, and it's, it's able to use, the computer is able to figure out and make a lot of decisions and choices or at, at least give you a bunch of options. So then in, in a sense, Dinar, you're sort of picking your, your favorites of things and then yeah. adjusting them to customize. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Because this is not going to be the final result of anything. At, like, even to the even till the end, I'll still be adjusting a lot of stuff, you know, if I don't like it. Mm -hmm. And what I'm going to do right now is so now you just out a, a ground plan to kind of just even it out, and then just exactly. have that secondary yeah. one creating the hills around it. Yeah. I feel like this is such a common theme when you talk about art at the highest levels is it's iterative. You know, Dinar just said, you know, this isn't going to be the finished product, but we need to get ideas out fast so that we can start talking about it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. You know, the whole and, thing, right. That's like within our industry, that's the whole thing is conveying an idea to the director or director, whomever it may be. Yeah. You got it. You got to produce things fast so that, and, and it doesn't have to be. I, I feel like everyone gets so caught up, especially in the era of Instagram. We get so caught up with making it look perfect right out the gate. And if, if we yeah. can't have it be the most beautiful thing immediately, then then we don't want to do it. But it's really almost the opposite, right? You want to get really, ideas I am guilty out. of that as well. Yeah, I, I yeah, am truly guilty of that as well. And it's super hard to, but it's, I think the first step always is being, being aware of that that's the case, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. I think that's always the first step for everybody is being aware of, all right, um, why am I actually doing it for? At mm. least for me, that was the thing. Because I noticed that, you see, for example, sorry to cut in, the face count is like 200K. And for me, that it doesn't justify why it should be that heavy. So I'm just, again, I'm going to decimate it. And it's the reason, you're, it, the reason you're decimating stuff is so that it can move fast. Exactly, yeah, because that's what I want to do is I, I want to be fast and I want to have a good basis. And, you know, I'm always I'm also thinking about, all right, how important is this in the image and how much detail should I do I need within this thing? And like a sand doesn't really need detail. You know, you see, like now it's way easier to move around with it. Totally. We got a question in the chat. Should I get Blender or Unreal? Uh, I'm new and just want to play around. I'm comfortable coding in Unreal Studio. Is it best to work in Blender first? Um, what, what's your take on that, Dinar? Man, it doesn't matter, man. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. doesn't matter, right? Well, and you know, they're both free softwares um, and just start start working. 
you know, yeah. grab something and, and get it going. Um, and if, if, if you're referencing, should I grab Kipash files as Unreal or Blender, it doesn't really matter because you can always go back to your account page and re-download kits in whatever file format you want later for free. So grab, grab one today and get going. I mean, if, if you want, take, take some of the, the tips you're learning here from Dinar on Blender and dive in. Um, and show us what you make with it. We'd love to see. Dinar, I'm curious with this image, how much of it do you already know what you want to execute versus how much of it are you kind of playing around and letting serendipity kind of drive it? Right. So what I usually, let me just show you guys this. I'm just getting inspired by everything, by, by my fellow peers, by movies, by mangas, by whatever, and then see what I can do with it, you know? Awesome. I love yeah. that. And show, showing how you keep this reference board there that you start with a mood board and then you, you can go back to that. And I think what you just said too is so cool that you get inspired by everything. I think that is is inherent in so many artists that you, yeah. they're constantly looking for the real world around them or the art that they see to help evolve them, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's and almost like the, the whole art world is, is one community feeding onto itself. But, but that's the whole thing, right? Is I always tell people as well is if you want to if you want to be as good as you know Maché or or even take directors right, all you have to do is all you have to do is just to, <laughs> as Dinar, you know I'm just saying the people that I look up to right, but all you have to do is actually see by who they get inspired by right, I can I can clearly tell where like by what Kanye West is inspired by because that guy is sampling old music and sampling. Like, for example, in our industry, if we copy something, it's stealing. But within the music industry, it's sampling. So right. just, a, just a bread for thought, because nothing is actually stealing. You're just borrowing idea. We always take from the past and form the future. It's always been the case, you know? Totally. I, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, we didn't, we didn't invent these ideas. We're all using things together to, um, I think it's Jason Reitman, the director, calls it his visual spice rack. Yeah. And he says, you know, if and, and Darren Aronofsky's constantly talking about this, too. Whenever he's uninspired, he takes the day off and goes to a museum. Right. Exactly. And then why? Why? It, I, I lately I've, I just finished watching um, what was it? Tenet. And you can also clearly tell by what Christopher Nolan was inspired by. You know, it's and I love that, actually. I love when I can see by who someone is inspired by and uh -huh. how they use that inspiration for their own benefit. Dinar, a question on what you're doing right now. So as you're dropping buildings in, are you thinking about uh, like the actual camera and composition or are you thinking about how the, how does this make sense from a, a world view? Exactly. I, I, I'm, first of all, I'm thinking how does this make sense from a world view? And as soon as I kind of figure that out, then I'm going to fuck around. Then I'm going to mess around with it. As in, <laughs> you see that? You saw that? That was a good save. But yeah, then I'm going to mess around with it because... First, I want to feel like it's kind of logical, you know. So the build, <coughs> excuse me, the buildings are on the side of the, on the edges of the of the uh, the road itself, and I wanted to show this as well, so that you know we're come to a point where if I feel the whole thing, I can take multiple shots, not just one shot. You know, that's what I lately tried to do is fill my whole scene and and kind of making it feel like it's a it's a whole set almost. Yeah. Well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just ask you a bunch of questions as you keep sure. going. But if at any point you're like, I, I gotta head down and focus, <laughs> just let us know. Yeah. Um, when when you're in the process of working on a game, you know, you you just finished Last of Us Part Two. You're working on a bunch of other upcoming stuff now. How much of this process is is what you do in the game? How much of it is you know, I guess, can you walk us through when you're designing a, a scene or a moment of a game, what the process is? Right. Um, I think the most important process for me always is reference research. And with research, I don't mean just the idea, but also like how does how does a certain light, light react to a certain material like grass? Because grass and ivy have a different type of material and it reacts differently to light. It's all these smaller things that adds a lot to your image itself, you know? So, and without that, without doing that, so I'll, I'll take an example for, uh, if, I, if I had to do an image in a, um, in a hospital, I don't know how a hospital looks like. I can, I can rely on my knowledge of hospital, but I know I can just go to the cliche stuff that I always know what's in the hospital, but it's usually the smaller things that adds a lot to the image itself. 
So in every image, I try to tell like a small story within every place itself. For example, I know these two buildings look alike, so I just put them next to each other. And that way, because we have smaller ones here, if I put them here and then a bigger a medium, a bigger one, and then let's say we would have a shot from this point of view, you can see that there's a lot of depth and we kind of slowly follow the eye itself. Mm -hmm. So it's, 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 it's very hard to say, you know, to ask somebody, how do you do this and how, what are you doing? Because it's almost like fighting logic against artistic, uh, artistic choices, you know? Mm -hmm. What, what is more important for that person's self? Because, like, you can't say Tim Burton is a worse director than Christopher Nolan because his movies are not realistic, right? Because that's just the choice. But when you make a choice like that where it doesn't look realistic, then it's all about how strong is, like, how, str how can you convince me with this idea? You know, how strong is your idea itself to convince me with it? Hmm. So I guess with, with, Working on professional work, do you often have a blank slate or do you get 3D assets or files from them? Or what's your, you know, after you've collected reference, are you thinking about, you know, levels from that world point of view? Um, or are you thinking about, okay, this is uh, the player's path that they have to go through. How am I going to create moments of interest? All three, which you just said, all three of them, we get we get based off of 3D, like I've had images where I just got a screenshot from a um, from a alpha version of a Last of Us 2 and then I had to uh, paint on top of it. Or we got like a basic mock-up of the gameplay area and we just had to flesh it out. So it's, uh, I think, I'm pretty sure you guys know that as well. I think with pre-production is the most fun part to do for me because you're just exploring the whole time. And once everybody figured out what, uh, how the game is going to look like then it's more you know being precise and them telling us uh what direction they want they wanted to take it in and the cool thing about naughty dog and and its artists it's always they they always are for great quality so if you can convince them that you know your idea is better than what they had before what they had then you know all power to you go for that but if it's if it isn't good then you know you just have to go back to which you initially promised, actually. Mm. I'd love to jump in with a couple questions from the chat. The first one, um, Bushy Doc asks, uh, how are you managing all the polys? And, and Bushy, he was uh, using the decimator tool in Blender to crunch some of the assets so he could get a lot of that information in. And then there's yes. been a couple questions um, uh, about your workflow 3D versus Photoshop. Are you going to, in your normal workflow, would, would you start with 3D or would you start with Photoshop after the mood board? Uh, what I always tell myself is, how detailed should I go in 3D where it where I don't come to a point where the three where the detailing in 3D is bothering me? And with that I mean if I detail it too much, it actually limits me within Photoshop if I want to, you know, um, adjust something or adjust the whole building within the image itself. But if it's too detailed, then I then it's a bit too hard, then it's way harder for me to do that. So it's a question of what do you want to achieve with it, you know? It's very hard, actually, that question. I'm still at, I'm still asking myself every day. So it kind of changes. It's kind of like you work in 3D until you're sick of 3D. And then yeah. when it's it's not fun anymore in 3D, you're like, nah, I'll jump in Photoshop and finish it up there. Exactly. Like I it, it, it all depends on what I what kind of image I do. But I to be honest, for interiors, I tend to do 80 percent 3D. And for exteriors, I tend to do like 20 to 30 percent. But, you know, now it's an exception. But yeah, back in with Last of Us 2, we, te we tended to do it like that. Awesome. Th thank yep. you for, for answering the question <laughs> three times. Uh, Chad, thank you for uh, for asking your questions. Um, we we don't have too much more time here, so we want to we want to uh, uh, get to those things. Um, Kai Ventura brings up a good point. We didn't even think about trying to disconnect the printer. That probably would have done it, though. Yeah, it's also <laughs> we made sure there were no microwaves within a three mile radius of this stream. So. <laughs> Uh, but Dinar, I mean, this is this is unbelievable. Despite technical difficulties, answering all of our uh, all of our tappings on your shoulder questions, um, you've got you've got a scene here in like in twenty minutes. Yeah, you, you're going to throw some of this some of this bloom and an atmosphere. Exactly. And let's uh, let's uh, let's add that exactly. Um, rubble. Let's. 
put this in the folder first. All right, let's add some lighting. Um, let's go here. This is the thing with Blender, it's, oh yes, thank you, the lords have spoken. So first thing you do is I'm gonna add a light, a sunlight. This is actually an add-on that I downloaded. It's from, I noted it down, it's from CG Cookies, I think, Photometric Lighting. And what the interesting stuff is, what he did is he actually made an uh, add-on where all the lights is, are based off of the actual, uh, uh, you know, sunlight or, or incandescent or LED lights. So he actually went to the websites like IKEA and checked how strong they actually they are. Huh. And yeah, it's pretty, it's, it's fun. I only use the direct sun so far, but you know, it's, um, it's a bit too strong, I guess. Let's put it on 21. Nice. All right. Let's put some contact shadows. Oh, that would be fine. One of my favorite things about watching Blender and, and Eevee is that it, it, you get so much good rendering for free in real time. It makes it so much easier to, to do your shot composition when you don't have to hit render you know, see what, wait two minutes, see the result, move the light a little bit, hit render, wait two minutes to see the result. Yeah. It's it just, seems it's so amazing, much man. easier to find your shot composition and to adjust everything. It, and it's also, oh yeah, I think that's the difference between Unity and Blender is in Blender you can model and do the lighting at the same time and not a lot of um, <clears throat> softwares have that. Um, Dinar, we're getting asked in the chat, what was the add-on's name again? Uh, it's called CG Cookie Photometric Lighting. If you type in YouTube, you will see that. CG Cookie Photometric yep. Lighting. Cool. Yes. All right, okay. it's, it's going somewhere. Hmm. And I guess the same question for this face, as you're throwing the sunlight on there, I'm assuming you have an idea of where you're going to put the camera. And so, yeah. So okay. let's say, you know, I, I was based on the lighting, based on everything at the end, I usually just walk around in my scene and have a, have a camera and then just play with every type of lens. You know, if you look at it right now, if you press this off, it's already something, right? Yeah. If you go to, View layer, sun, direct sun. Look how cool that is. Hmm. So, and what I did right here is uh, I put an RGB curve on HDR and what that does is actually makes it more graphical. So this is how it looks like. This is what we do if it goes the other way around. So it makes the shadows more light. And what I like is it makes the shadows more dark, but it almost makes a whole shape out of it instead of, you know, kind of mixed here. You see that? It's grouping the values a bit for me. And gotcha. on top of that, I put a color node, uh, a mixed RGB. And what I wanted to do is I make the HDR a bit more yellowish so that it influences the whole, uh, the whole structure itself. All right, so once we're here, I think we can go back here and then focus on some good rubble. I think it's interesting with your approach that you, you've you kind of, while the camera is in flux, you've chosen a, an area that you know at least is gonna be your foreground so that you can focus your detail and attention yeah. in that area yeah. and know that like you don't have to put rubble everywhere. And I know a lot of people in the chat have been talking about how's he managing his polygons and his, his vertices you're not looking at too heavy of a scene right now to be no. honest no it's 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 actually it's pretty light so far it's keep in mind also because of the streaming and everything it looks a bit slow but it's it's pretty light so far and that's the cool thing is is the lighter for, like because i've never had a, ha a high end pc i always had to think about decimating that's like my second nature when i do 3d yeah, and I mean the you know you got a couple of kitbash buildings in there, but probably less than ten of them in there. And yeah, then and, and this is the cool part, right? So let's say we have a, a kitbash building like this one. What I what I do with it is let's make a small story here, right? So I copy this one, and then oh, <laughs> so, so 
I, I think y'all can hear us. Uh, uh, Dinar, I think, is experiencing a, an audio on his side. But if you can hear us in the chat, would you give us a thumbs up? <laughs> and, uh, and audio. And here's Dinar. There we uh, go. What the hell? Uh, and, it, just, and uh, it just muted itself. I think it was uh, too great. It was too cool. It was too cool. Uh, well, <laughs> we'll fin finish that thought if you've got some things. So, um, yeah, it's, uh, it's, you know, just making use of the KitBash uh, uh, 3D uh, uh, tools and, and making it your own, you know, like this. So it just breaks up like that. And if we go to the lighting, which is super cool, I think the sun is still a bit too strong. I, I love this. Well, Dinar, we um, we are really short on time here. We could we could stay and do this with you for hours, and you know, yeah. given the nature of this event, um, we we're, we're going to do a bunch of things really quick. But uh, right. we'll be doing plenty more with Dinar over uh, over time. Um, Dinar right. here from from The Last of Us. Uh, you actually used the Warzone kit um, on The Last of Us projects. Um, yes. And here you've shown us really quickly in Blender how you can ideate, um, build topography, and get a scene going. I mean, it's unfathomable how much you got done here in about 35 minutes with us. Right, it's, it's, it's also because of the kits you guys made, man. That's, the, that's all honesty, I'm just playing like Legos here right now. Well, truly, we, we greatly appreciate you um, taking the time out of your day to, uh, to let us shine a little bit of a spotlight on the amazing work that you're doing out there. Thank um, you so much where for can, including me. Where can people keep up with you? How can they follow you? You can follow me on my Instagram, Donar Woody Art, or Twitter. It's the same name. Uh, I also have an art station, Donar Woody, and I'm 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 posting daily on uh, on Instagram, or not sorry, not daily. I'm posting most often on Instagram, and I'm planning on doing a mentorship soon, and hopefully a tutorial. So yeah, just keep in uh, keep in touch, and hopefully uh, we'll get that sorted out. Awesome. I can't wait to see the tutorial you create. I mean, 30 minutes of this, I, I could watch this for hours. And I know people in the chat have uh -huh. been saying the same thing. Oh, man, well, that's super nice. Really happy all, to hear that. You all in the chat, we, we often do this show with a live audience. Um, we can't today because it's uh, the work from home version of Lightbox. Um, but if you're out there and you loved this, would you please uh, give a thank you or a clap to Dinar? We, we let him know how appreciative we are of him uh, spending his time here with us. Thank you so um, much, guys. We'll catch you soon, buddy. Talk yeah, to you very catch soon. Catch you soon, man.